Superman and Lois has finally returned. It came back last night with episode 6 titled Broken Trust. And it took a few weeks off. I think it was because Supergirl was coming back. And they probably wanted people to check out Supergirl because it's its last season. I don't watch Supergirl personally. Maybe you do. Maybe it's pretty good this season. Let me know below. But this episode was pretty good. And Superman and Lois... The six episodes that we've got so far have been pretty solid. They've been pretty good. I love this show. I really do because there's so many storylines going on and I'm interested in every single one of them. I think the writing is off the charts and this show doesn't rely on action or CGI fest battles or anything like that. It relies on the characters that are in the show because they're so well written. I'm interested and I feel for every single character. And I think the writing team should get a round of applause because it's been so good. Now many people were turned off this show because it's CW. They thought the CGI would be poor. The VFX would be poor. So they just didn't bother trying it whatsoever. And I would think go and go back to episode one and give this show a shot because honestly it's been pretty good. And Tyler Hoechlin, I've been saying this for a long time, Tyler Hoechlin has the potential to be a great Superman. But he didn't have the right material to showcase that in Supergirl or in the, the, the crossovers with the Flash and stuff like that. The material wasn't good for him whatsoever. But this show is giving him the right material and he is proving, hey, I can be a great Superman, I can be a great Clark Kent, just give me the right material. And he does it in this show. Absolutely perfect. And I would argue maybe he's... Probably one of the best to ever do Clark Kent and Superman. You know, I just think he's he's perfect. And the relationship between his two sons, it's not about him being Superman in this show. It's about him trying to be the best father he can be to his kids. And that's a lot harder than being Superman. And I like those kind of aspects and those themes to it. And then you have Lois Lane. She's going through her own stuff as well. She has her own storyline, which is important. She's not just an anchor towards Jonathan and Jordan and Clark she also has her own thing going on as well and she's trying to prove something and I like how every single character in this show isn't just there to be a love interest or just isn't there to be a wife or a husband they're there because they add something to the overall story and I'm interested to see where the overall story goes for Superman and Lois because you know Smallville or The Flash or Supergirl they usually have a villain every single week Superman and Lois isn't like that whatsoever it has a story it knows where it's going and it's trying to tell all of these different kind of storylines within each episode but it's all headed towards the big climax which I'm guessing will be the season finale or the overall plan for season two and season three you feel like it's going somewhere you don't feel like okay this is episode four who's this week's villain it's not like that whatsoever no yes they have villains in some of the episodes but it's not like every single week there's a different villain sometimes there's recurring villains like a Captain Luthor I'm interested to see what he's doing but this episode was just it was brilliant it really was and these six episodes are solid and if you haven't checked out Superman and Lois you need to check it out because it's really well done it really is I mean that this is a guy who watched CW shows and maybe fell out of love with them because maybe they were too cheesy maybe the VFX was just wasn't believable and stuff like that but in this show it doesn't rely on the VFX but when it's done it's pretty done it's it's, it's done pretty well you know you know, I, I will admit that maybe the budget in episode 1 and episode 2 of this season was a little bit higher than it is right now. But again, it's not relying on those big action set pieces. It's relying on these characters, which it's doing pretty well. But this episode opens up with Tag Harris, who makes his return. Now, a few episodes ago, we got to see him kind of obtain these new powers, kind of like super speed. He's able to vibrate really fast and stuff like that. And now he's back because he was sent off to a school, we were told, that helps kids like him. But it looks like it wasn't really a school. It may have been a government base or something like that. And they were experimenting on him. They were testing him and stuff like that. But he was able to escape. And he attacks Jordan Kent. Jordan, of course, has his father's powers. So he attacks him because he thinks that he has the answers. Because he has the video from the night that the party went on where the explosion happened. And that's where Tag got his powers. And that's where Jordan kind of discovered that he kind of has Superman powers as well. And it's kind of hard to control. So he has the video. He's asking Jordan, look, what's going on? Why'd you do this to me? Stuff like this. And Jordan's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I really don't know. And he's attacking Jordan pretty badly. He's hitting them pretty hard and stuff like that. But Superman's able to come and save him and stop the fight from happening. Tag runs off and he causes kind of a disruption on these train tracks as well. Where the train's about to crash. But Superman's able to save it. And it was pretty cool how the camera kind of pans around Superman. He has caught the train and he's also using his x-ray beam to melt the metal of the track so it gets back in the place it should be and then the train's able to, to ride off. So yeah, that's the opening sequence and then the logo comes up, Superman and Lois. That was a pretty good opening sequence. You know, 
in this episode, there's so many different storylines going on, but I'm interested in every single one of them. And that's a huge credit to the writing team because I'm not bored. I'm not thinking, oh, this one's boring. I just want to go back to Superman. Of course I love Superman, but I'm also intrigued. I'm interested to see what Lois Lane is doing, what Captain Luthor is doing, what Morgan Edge is doing, what Jonathan and Jordan, Sarah, uh, Lana Lang, all these characters because I feel invested. And I like all these characters. I really do. So I think the writing team is doing a, a pretty good job. But in this episode, Jordan and Jonathan, of course, are getting ready for their next football game, which is against Metropolis, their old team where they used to live. A lot of Jordan's old bullies are on this team. And Jonathan, a lot of his old friends are on this team as well. But they have something to prove. They want to play against them. But Jordan is getting a lot of headaches ever since he got attacked by Tag Harris. These kind of loud, high-pitched noises are kind of overtaking his headspace and it's not too good but Clark doesn't want to let him play football because he's afraid that he might not be fully healed yet in case his powers go out of control but he's able to convince his father look I'm okay I'm fine there's even an instant where you know Jonathan has to bring him into the bathroom and make sure he's okay and stuff like that but he he convinces Jonathan not to tell his father because he won't let him play the football game Jordan wants to play the football game so he can prove to all his bullies that you know you can't bully me anymore and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting. You also got Lois Lane working with Captain Luthor. Of course, Captain Luthor is such an interesting character. He comes, he comes from a different Earth. Earth 2, I don't know what Earth, but he comes from an Earth where Superman turned evil and killed everybody. Killed all his friends and his family and stuff. And in that reality, he was married to Lois Lane. Captain Luthor was married to Lois Lane. So now he's in this world and he's trying to stop Superman before he goes bad. But he's also helping Lois Lane because he's probably still in love with her. You know, But even though that's not the Lois Lane he married, you know it looks like her and stuff like that maybe even acts like her but it's not the exact lowest lane so they're trying to investigate morgan edge as well because he has the mines he's creating so much work for for smallville everyone loves morgan edge but lowest lane is trying to prove this guy is shady this guy is bad but nobody in the town want to wants to listen to lowest lane because he's providing jobs he's providing money to people something that smallville hasn't had in a long long time so they investigate the mines so they find this ex kryptonite in the walls of the mines and they're they're taken aback by this of course it's not even green it's like yellow or gold or something like that but leslie lar comes in of course she's got kryptonian powers she tries to stop them with her her x-ray beam and uh yeah she, she, she they're able to get away because captain luther has some sort of device able to knock her out which was pretty cool as well i thought they were gone for sure i thought something bad was going to happen or maybe superman had to would have to come and save them but they're able to escape and outside lois dana's like who exactly are you because you're not a journalist like me you have this device you're able to get in here so easily with these passes into the mines who exactly are you? But Captain Luthor is like, I can't really tell you. I, I just can't. Just trust me. I can't tell you. Because he comes from this world where Superman's evil. He turned bad. He killed people. Black suit Superman. You know, he, he's here to stop Superman to kill him. But of course he can't tell Lois Lane that because she's married to Superman. She's not going to believe him straight away. You know, stuff like that. This is very interesting in the show. But Lois Lane has to has to go off then to get her to her family. But I just like that dynamic there between those two. And I like Captain Luthor as a character because he's not just a villain to be a villain. He has a purpose to defeat Superman because he's evil. Because of what he did in his home planet and his art, you know, you know art 2 or whatever it is. So that's, for, that's pretty interesting. But... Jonathan and Jordan at the football game. They're able to beat Metropolis. They're able to win the game. Uh, everything's going pretty good. Even Jonathan gets in. Back in as quarterback. Does pretty well. Helps the team win. But just as the the game is ending. You know a lot of the Metropolis players are on top of Jordan. Because he was doing so well in the game. And they're trying to hurt him. And they're kind of hitting him as well. And his powers are starting to go out of control again. You know his x-ray beam is just ready to explode. Clark has to run onto the field. And um, he's, he has to put his hands over his eyes. And just tell him let it go. Because it, you can't control it right now. And it was pretty cool. That Jordan has to let his beam go into his father's hands. And of course Superman's able to take it. But it was hurting him. But they win the game. They go back to the hotel room. And Clark is like. What exactly is going on? Did you have any symptoms? What, what What is happening? And of course, Jordan doesn't want to tell his father the truth because he doesn't want him to overreact. But Jonathan knows that he has to tell his father. So he tells him, look, this happened in school. He's been getting headaches. He hasn't been able to control it. And of course, Clark is pretty pissed off at this as well because his kids weren't honest with him. And he's trying to be a good parent, but he's also trying to be Superman. And he's trying to let his son play football, even though he has these powers that... He probably shouldn't be playing football weight in the first place, but Clark is trying to just keep his kids happy, but it's very hard for him. But he gets a call because Tag Harris has kidnapped Sarah. You know, Sarah's an interesting character because she's kind of the love interest for Jordan, but she told him that 
just wants to be friends right now. So that'll probably happen later on down the show where them two become a couple. Maybe, or maybe she'll start getting feelings for uh, John. And that could be some friction between the two brothers as well. But Sarah decides not to go to the game in Metropolis because she wants to babysit for her mom and dad who want to celebrate because Lana Lyne has got a promotion thanks to Morgan Edge. There's a little bit of friction between those two characters in the episode because, you know... Eh, Lana was able to get the promotion and her husband wanted something like that as well. But by the end of the episode, them two, they, them two make up. And I like their relationship. It's very sweet. But, of course, you know, Tag Harris shows up. He thinks he can trust Sarah. They used to be friends and stuff like that. But he starts to vibrate and freaks her out. She tries to close the door. He tries to just push the door open and knocks her out. And then he kind of gets a little bit afraid and he kidnaps Sarah, brings her to Metropolis where he's hiding out. And he's trying to convince her that, look, I think Jordan's the reason I have these powers. He even shows her the video as well of the night of the party. But Superman's able to show up because he gets a call from the US Army, from Lois Lane's father, that we found Tag Harris. We need you. And Superman goes to, to the location. He's able to talk to Tag Harris. He's like, look, I, I will protect you. I will help you. And Tag Harris doesn't want to listen to Superman because I trusted you before. You sent me away. These people mistreated me. I was experimented on or I was just badly treated. And Superman's like, I didn't know that was going to happen to you just believe me this time i will make sure everything will be okay you know and that was a pretty good moment but just as he's about to convert you know tag harris to surrender the u.s army come in they've got weapons they've got guns and they try to shoot tag harris because he's getting a little bit nervous he starts to vibrate and stuff like that and superman flies in front of tag harris to save him and he even gets shot by some other weapons but also kryptonite and Superman's on the ground, of course, hurt because that's his weakness, of course. And Superman starts to get pretty angry. We get red eyes Superman in this episode. And he was pretty effed off. You don't want to piss off Superman. You definitely don't want to piss off Superman. He'll take your head off like that. And I thought maybe he was going to retaliate a little bit. But he's able to hold himself back, you know, and not attack these US soldiers. He's like, stand down. Get away now, you know, because Superman had it under control. He was he was stopping the situation from happening. But then we cut over to Jonathan and Jordan, who were told to stay in their hotel room. Of course, their buddies from the team come around and say, "Come on, let's go celebrate. Let's go get some drinks and stuff like that." Because they just beat Metropolis, their rivals. So they go into the town to celebrate, and they're drinking and they're just having fun and stuff. But the football team from Metropolis show up as well wanting a fight because they lost the game obviously as well and they trigger Jordan Jordan's getting Jordan's getting very annoyed because Jordan used to be bullied by these guys back in school he was picked on he was bullied by these guys so there's a lot of emotions going there as well but Jonathan can see this and Jonathan's like look just just forget about him let's go let's go let's go but Jordan retaliates he's about to punch the main jock from Metropolis and just like it just shows you how much the two brothers care for each other in a way but how much Jordan you know, can't control his emotions, but Jonathan can see this, and he steps in, and he tries to stop, you know, Jonathan's punch, and Jonathan's basically Superman, or nearly Superman, and he breaks his brother's hand, and that was a pretty heartbreaking moment, because you can hear the bones kind of snapping in his hand, and, you know, you can see his hand is all weird, and stuff like that, and he breaks his own brother's hand, trying to stop the fight, and, you know, and Clark, this is the battle Clark has to go with because he's trying to deal with being Superman and also raising his sons. But also one of his sons has powers and he's trying to teach his son. And there was a great moment near the end of the episode when they're back in the house. You know, Jonathan is in the cast, you got Lois Lane there, you got Clark and you got Jordan. And, you know, Jordan's trying to say, look, I didn't mean to do this. I didn't want this to happen. I didn't mean for this to happen to my brother. I wouldn't hurt him like this. And, you know, and, and Clark's like, look, your brother has every right to be upset. You know, you did this to him. It doesn't matter if you, you meant to do it or not. You have to control your powers. And there's even a great line from the Spider-Man trilogy. With great power comes great responsibility. And I like how that was used. And Clark had a good like piece of dialogue there where he's talking about, look, when my powers first came out, people were worried. They were afraid that I would turn on them, that I would be evil, that I would cause uproar and stuff like this. I had to convince people that I was good, that I could control my powers. But every single day I'm tested about this. I'm tested that I could at any moment use my powers for bad and all that trust goes. And there was a great line in it as well. It takes longer for you to heal the trust you've broken with someone than say a cast, like his brother just broke his arm. So, Also the last kind of shot for this episode was you know, Lois and Jordan on the porch and Jordan just breaks down you know he, he's under a lot of pressure right now dealing with his powers after what he did to his brother the love of his life as well lying to her so I thought this scene was pretty heartbreaking to see you know a mother confront her son but the son just completely 
break down and to start crying. And it was hard to watch Jordan go through something like this. And then, of course, he starts to get headaches again, even worse than before. And he passes out on the porch. Lois is to call Clark. Clark comes and doesn't know what's wrong, but he has to take him to the Fortress of Solitude. So the ending shot for this episode really was a bit of a panic where Clark is flying his son to the Fortress of Solitude to see if he's going to be okay. So we don't know exactly what's going on with Jordan. What's causing this? Is it from Tag Harris or is it from something else? Which I think it's just very interesting to see what direction they're going to go. But this is just a heartbreaking scene and one of my favourite scenes from the episode because it just felt so real. You know, it, it did. And uh, I hope Jordan's okay by next week's episode. But it's going to be interesting to see what the Fortress of Solitude has to say and what Jorel has to say about it as well. So yeah, we'll have to, have to check that out. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I really thought it was a good episode. You know, as I said, all those stories I just told you about, they're all interesting. They're all just, they have me engaged. I care for these characters. I want to see where the story goes. I'm interested to see what Morgan Edge's endgame is. Captain Luthor, what's he going to try and do? Is he going to team up with Superman? Is he going to try and kill Superman? You know, there's friction there between Superman and Lois Lane's father, the head of the army. You know, he's talking about, look, the way to do this isn't the way that, that, that you're doing it right now by by trying to shoot a kid with kryptonite or with weapons and stuff like that and the general had a pretty good point like i'm hired to protect the people of this country and i will do anything to do that and and superman's like i, I can see that so so many different storylines going on characters are interesting the character development is off the charts we're only in episode six i don't know how many episodes are in this season i think maybe 16 or 14 maybe maybe it's 18 I'm not too sure but it's not in the 20s but if they can keep up this momentum, it's pretty damn good. It really is week to week. And I look forward to next week's episode already. And I was I was annoyed that they took a break after episode 5 because I was so into this big time. But if you haven't checked it out, I'm sure you have if you're watching the spoiler part of the video right now. But yeah, it's just really, really good. And Tyler Hoechlin, with the right material, is proving that he's a great Superman. He really is. And I'm happy for him. And I'm happy for the show that's doing pretty well. I think the ratings are pretty good for it as well. It's already confirmed for a season two. I'm happy over that. But guys, what's your thoughts on this episode of Superman Lois, episode six of season one? Top notch. Good stuff. It's not unbelievable CGI or VFX, but it doesn't have to be in my opinion because the story is so interesting. But do you like this show? Is it just okay for you? Do you hate it? Maybe you're hate watching it. Maybe it's so bad you're just like, oh, I'm going to watch this just to hit on it. Let me know below. I know many people won't watch it, because it's CW, because they think it's going to be cheesy and stuff. But if you can convince somebody to, and say to them, look, this show is actually pretty good. Get the bad image out of your head of the CW. This isn't that. This is something very, very different. So you'll have to see how the show develops. It could be terrible for the next 10 episodes. And we'll be like, oh, this show is terrible. But I just think they're on too much of a roll to mess it up. But guys, thanks for watching. Give a like, comment, subscribe. Come follow me on all the social medias, movies that matter. Appreciate you watching. But get in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on Superman and Lois. Not just this episode, but the entire season as a whole. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. And see you next week.